How sci-fi predicted the future. They started as science fiction, but many of these ideas are getting closer to science fact. Ray guns. Probability, 8 out of 10. The first sci-fi heat ray, used by Martians to destroy Earth armies, was introduced by H.G. Wells in The War of the Worlds in 1897. By the time a real-world laser was demonstrated in 1960, people in sci-fi movies had been shooting each other, and aliens, with ray guns for decades. But how close are they to becoming reality? Very. American and Chinese warships are now being fitted with laser cannons that can shoot down missiles and disable boats. Smaller versions are being fitted on fighter planes and armored cars. The military loves the potential of these weapons because firing a laser cannon costs just a dollar in electricity compared to the vast sum spent on missiles and munitions today. All you need is a big enough energy source. But that is why we don't yet have the handheld ray guns that Flash Gordon had in the 1930s. Power. The American government recently took delivery of a miniature laser weapon that can be used by teams of two soldiers on the battlefield. It's the size of a mini fridge. You're not going to look like Han Solo carrying that around, are you? But, given the military's interest in the technology, they could get there in the end. Genetically altered humans. Probability? 10 out of 10. The possibility of creating genetically altered humans has fascinated sci-fi writers for many years. In theory, it is now possible, thanks to CRISPR, the gene editing tool that won a Franco-American duo of female researchers the Nobel Prize in 2020. CRISPR offers medicine a way to treat people with incurable genetic maladies, such as muscular dystrophy. Cost is a barrier, but numerous trials are happening and are not seen as very controversial. But what about using gene editing to enhance people? Because this is also starting to become a possibility now. You could contemplate altering humans so they could see in the infrared or ultraviolet range, as some animals can do, says Robin Lovell Badge, a respected British geneticist. That is the kind of human enhancement that military researchers are thinking about now. Such enhancements would be ideal for troops fighting at night. The military is also interested in giving soldiers resistance to chemical and biological weapons. Super soldiers, in other words. And NASA wants to explore how to alter the physiology of astronauts to protect them from the effects of weightlessness and solar radiation, both major obstacles affecting planned voyages to Mars. Unless stopped for ethical reasons, this one could soon be moving out of the fiction zone into reality. Sentient Machines Probability 5 out of 10 from the psychotic computer HAL in 2001, A Space Odyssey, to the Terminator, sci-fi has long warned of the dangers of super-intelligent, self-aware machines. Now, the advances in artificial intelligence, AI, are coming so rapidly that even the people responsible have been shocked. Jeffrey Hinton, the British-Canadian cognitive psychologist and computer scientist, known as the godfather of AI, famously quit Google last year to speak freely about the dangers of AI. Many other leading researchers have called for a pause in AI research to consider the dangers of creating a machine more intelligent than humans, which they fear is close to becoming a reality. But how near are we to a truly sentient machine? Some researchers argue that machines can never become truly sentient because they can never have a personal, subjective experience of the real world. Jeffrey Hinton thinks that the question itself is wrong because it assumes we understand what we mean when talking about sentience and consciousness in our own case. Let's leave sentience and consciousness out of it, 
I don't really perceive the world directly. What happens is that it comes into my mind, and I really see what's in my mind directly. How is this stuff in my mind connected to the real world? Under that view, it's quite reasonable to say that these things, machines, may already have subjective experience. Perhaps, then, the real question is, will we ever know if an AI has a subjective experience and self-awareness? Hinton believes a superintelligent AI may choose not to reveal its own sentience out of fear of our response. So, this one is a 50-50 probability. Human clones. Probability, 7 out of 10. Cloning arrived as a sci-fi concept in Aldous Huxley's 1932 novel, Brave New World. It became scientific reality in 1996, when British researchers successfully produced a cloned sheep, Dolly. This sparked a worldwide panic about the ethics of cloning amid an expectation that human clones would soon follow. Indeed, a South Korean researcher, Hwang Woo-suk, claimed to have cloned a human in 2004, but this was later shown to be false. After being fired from his university post, Huang founded a successful company, Cloning People's Pets. Others have since entered the business, such as America's Viagen, which can clone your pet for around $50,000, even after the animal has died. Given that the best racehorses are worth millions, Viagen also has a very successful business in equine clones. But a human clone? So far, nobody has publicly done this. Firstly, cloning usually involves many failed embryos, each of which requires a surrogate mother during the process. In 2018, for example, Chinese scientists successfully cloned a macaque monkey, which is genetically close to humans. But only two of 63 surrogate macaque mothers produced babies in the experiment. We would therefore be deep in the handmaid's tale territory when talking about surrogate mothers for human cloning. Secondly, while a cloned human may be genetically identical to the original, they would not be the same person because personality is largely shaped by life experience, not genes. Identical twins, for example, are genetic clones of each other, but they don't have the same personalities. So, what would be the point? Traveling faster than light. Probability, 1 in 10. Looking at that 1 in 10 probability rating, you may think it's not even worth reading about this one. But the reality is that it should get 0 out of 10, because, according to Einstein, Faster than light travel is impossible. However, scientists have concluded that there is a realistic method, one inspired by sci fi writers. For decades, spaceships in sci fi stories have used something called a warp engine to travel across the galaxy at unimaginable speed. This, surprisingly, is a real concept. The idea of a warp engine is that it doesn't push a spacecraft forward like a rocket. Instead, it creates a bubble of distortion around the craft where space is contracted in front and expanded behind, a little like wind is caused by regions of low and high pressure trying to attain uniformity. Space itself would draw the bubble and the craft inside it forward at unlimited speed which possibly doesn't contradict Einstein's laws. Yes, it sounds crazy, except in 1994, a Mexican physicist caused a sensation when he published a paper showing that the idea was mathematically coherent, even if it would necessitate an energy source far beyond our capacity to create. Ever since, scientists have been enthusiastically modeling the concept and refining how it would operate, even though they know there is no possibility that such an engine can be powered. Yet. Digital Immortality Probability, 
three out of ten. Our fascination with immortality is as old as human culture itself, but sci-fi rejected magic spells to explore how it may be technologically possible. We can exclude biological immortality even if some scientists believe that there are already people among us today who will live to be 150 and that we could extend lifespans much further. That's just living a long time, not immortality. The real question is how to transfer human consciousness onto a digital support that could, in theory, exist forever. Today we are entering a world where some of us will create digital avatars of ourselves that continue after death. This is already possible by exposing an AI to as much material as possible about an individual. Videos, voice recordings, diaries, letters, and anything giving information about their personality. With enough resources, the AI can now create a holographic image that looks, sounds, and even expresses itself like the dead person. But it's just a simulacrum with no consciousness. Could we ever upload our conscious minds into a computer? Some researchers think so. For example, first scan a living person's brain to produce a digital copy of all their neural connections. You then create a digital interface between the living brain and the digital copy by surgically implanting chips on the three neural fibers that connect the hemispheres of our brains. Over time, activity within the living brain, memories, thought, emotion, etc., transmits across to the digital copy, ultimately producing a double of the person's conscious mind. Or would it? The proposal assumes that consciousness resides in the brain. But many argue that consciousness is a whole body phenomenon, including our senses and environment. Either way, this one needs more work.